On the heels of touting the importance of doing something in response to climate change. And this was of course during the COP26 summit. Ice cream queen Nancy Pelosi was seen cozying up with rich oil tycoons at a fancy San Francisco wedding. In fact, she was a big part of that wedding, an important part of that wedding. Pelosi officiated at the wedding of Ivy Getty, the great granddaughter of oil tycoon Jay Paul Getty in recent days. Although it remains unclear what day the wedding was held, photographs and details of the wedding suggested it was an opulent affair. Featuring designer dresses for bridesmaids and decorations with gold lace. Also in attendance, by the way, were other fancy Dems, including Gavin Newsom. The ceremony was held at City Hall in San Francisco, and pictures from Vogue appear to show fellow Democrats, Newsom, and the mayor of, or the former mayor of Chicago, London Breed, in attendance. And so, look, it's it definitely sends a message. The counters what Nancy Pelosi and uh, congressional Democrats uh, claim to care about during the climate summit, COP26. And that doesn't really surprise me. The notion of politicians being hypocrites is not really, it's not new <laughs> to say the least. But they keep finding themselves in these scandals, right? I, and when right wingers do it, it's never really turned into a big deal by the Democratic Party because they're so awful at messaging. But when Democrats do it, it just provides so much material for the right wing. Which, by the way, I'm not against. If the Democrats are wrong, they're wrong. But here she is officiating the wedding for the daughter of, um, or the granddaughter, I should say, of like an oil tycoon. And it's just, look at that, look at that wedding. Like, look at that way. I mean, I'm not hating, sure, whatever. But, like, how about after failing so hard on the Build Back Better agenda, maybe don't be seen officiating a wedding like this? I don't know. Just thinking, thinking out loud. You know, I know you don't watch a lot of football, Anna, but in the words of the great Denny Green, uh, they are who we thought they were. As it pertains to Nancy Pelosi and Gavin Newsom. And honestly, Nancy Pelosi and you know, TYT viewers are savvy enough and smart enough to understand this. She ascended to her position in the Democratic Party by being one of the best fundraisers. And no, she wasn't doing them Bernie fundraising, getting 20, 30 bucks from normal people like you and I. She was going after the big bucks. Big donors, and that's why she became a prominent member of the Democratic Party. And amongst those people, I'm sorry, like Nancy Pelosi and Gavin Newsom are model Democrats, right? They're not an embarrassment. They're what a Democrat should be. Suck ups to rich people and pay lip service to the sort of liberalism about cultural issues like the arts and quote unquote representation, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes down to the nuts and bolts things, bread and butter issues that everyday working Americans care about, they fail to deliver at every single turn. So the idea that Nancy Pelosi is hanging out with some with a bunch of aristocrats and so is Gavin Newsom, that's par for the course for these people in their ilk. Yeah, and it doesn't even matter how many times they get burned by doing the exact same they love thing. It. They're they're going to keep doing it because this is look, I'll, I'll get to why this is a bigger problem in just a minute, but I I wanted to just make a clarification because the graphic totally threw me off and I'm like, "Oh man, I really don't know who the mayor like who which mayor serves which city because this graphic is throwing me off." But no. Uh, there was a mistake in the graphic. So uh, London Breed is the uh, mayor of San Francisco. Um, and uh, yes, the mayor of Chicago was there as well, in addition to the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. So let me get that clarification out of the way. Uh, but putting that aside, look, the problem with the Democratic Party is that the reputation that the party used to have, you know, the party of FDR, like that doesn't exist anymore. And I think. Voters are now privy to that because you see Democratic lawmakers, of course, taking bribes, legalized bribes from corporate interests. 
And so you see a lot of similarities substantively between Democrats and Republicans, especially when it comes to economic policy. You hear a lot about fiscal responsibility from Democrats, which is a joke. I mean, that was what you would typically hear from the Republican Party. And so when your best friends and the people that you're like rubbing elbows with are the Gettys and you know the lobbyists that you're enjoying a meal at the French Laundry with, you're just so disconnected from the realities of your own constituents. And that's why it's, it's a problem. Now, add that to the fact that you also have members of Congress trading individual stocks, investing in individual stocks. Which means that if they know that their regulations or proposed regulations are gonna hurt the bottom line for these companies, <laughs> It's going to hurt their bottom line. It's going to hurt their return on investment. So all like the way the system is set up altogether really puts constituents at a disadvantage. So much so that, you know, what are these Dems got to lose? I mean, they're brazen about their ties to the corporate world. Totally brazen. Yeah, and I think a lot of the mistakes that get made on our side on the left is that we think the other side even though you know, I tend to think we have two opponents on the left, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. But yep. we make the mistake of thinking that the other side is just a bunch of unhinged, crazed, idiotic, petty, demented, lunatics, deplorable. But guess what? They got a point about making Nancy Pelosi the poster child for Democratic Party hypocrisy. They're right. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have to admit that the right wing has a point when they zero in on people like Pelosi. Like, how can we pretend that that woman gives a damn about the issues that afflict working class people when, one, she's a 300 millionaire at least, and two, all she ever does is hobnob and kowtow to the uber wealthy. So when they make her a monster on the right, whether it be on hate radio or Fox News and talk about the hypocrisy and the lies and the BS about, oh, I just love the black people and the gays and the trans and all the afflicted. They can tell that it's BS, it's lip service. Totally, exactly. I mean, that's such an important point. And they they weigh into those culture issues, those social issues, precisely because they don't really have a leg to stand on in regard to the economic issues. So when the right wing baits them with manufactured culture wars, you know, stuff like critical race theory, for instance, they always take the bait because what other option do they have? What is their alternative message to the Republican Party? Are they going to talk about how they're holding corporations accountable? Are they going to talk about how they're making corporations pay their fair share of taxes? Are they going to talk about all the wonderful social programs that they've accomplished? <laughs> they, they haven't done anything. They haven't done much. I mean, even with the bipartisan infrastructure bill that they're now trying to do positive PR around. Sure, there are some provisions. I don't want to completely minimize some of the okay provisions in there. But make no mistake about it, there is a reason why you had Republicans, 19 of whom voted for it in the Senate, 13 of whom voted for it in the House. They voted for it because they love the corporate handouts. And so, by the way, the reconciliation bill, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Well, where'd it go? No, but they yeah. don't worry. Don't worry. Some progressives in Congress trust that Joe Biden will deliver. Trust. We'll and, and here's the thing, uh, you know, these people want to be able to run on simply, I got a D next to my name. You voter should trust me just because you see that shiny old D next to my name. And it's like, ah, you guys don't do anything. Your brand isn't strong. It's in the tank for a reason. And not, of, not only just that. Joe Biden's approval rating, record lows, because the pandemic still stinks. People are sick of the mandates. And on the other end, you're delivering nothing in terms of material goods to these people. So they're cooked. They're just cooked. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get 
playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.